All right, let us turn now to someone who really understands not just the diplomatic angle, but the political and, and, and legislative considerations. Gordon Giffen uh, is a former U.S. ambassador to Canada. He is in Asheville, North Carolina, and has been very patient waiting for us here. Uh, Mr. Giffen, thank you so much for joining the program. Uh, good, as always, to have you. And, and you've heard the assessment from Katie and Alex there. How do we get to this point where electric vehicles, so much the future for auto manufacturing, so much of what Ontario has bet on in terms of manufacturing going forward, and yet it now really seems like that kind of investment could be under threat? Yeah, I think the way we got here was um, in an effort to craft legislation that was enhancing employment opportunities in the United States through the tax credits for electric vehicles manufactured and assembled in the United States by union labor. Um, no one really thought about the fact that they were sideswiping the auto industry in Canada. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I, I just don't think anybody thought about it. Now it's in a huge piece of legislation, as Alex was describing, I don't know if he meant literally on page 1241, but that could be where it is. Um, and to unravel it, to try and get it out of there while the administration is making a supreme effort to get it passed, it meaning the entire bill. If you start pulling threads out of it right now, it starts to unravel. And if they run that risk, um, they're really worried that they'll lose the whole bill. So. That's the challenge uh, is to, and I, I think he laid out some real options, one of which could be uh, how the administration chooses to implement the law. Yeah, I suppose, Ambassador, uh, one of the things you're referring to is like, this is the legislation, but it's not the regulation, and the White House can then work on how it dictates to officials on, on how to interpret the law. Is that, is that essentially what you're getting at? Yeah, and, and I guess the other thing that I would mention, and it may have come up, I didn't hear the whole interview you had earlier, there are a lot of southern states in the United States that have large automobile manufacturing plants, and they are not unionized. Many of those states have right-to-work laws, mm -hmm. meaning you're not required to join a union in order to be in a manufacturing facility. And so most of the southern states have large auto manufacturing without union jobs. So I think Canada ought to be trying to align with southern states who are very much against this provision because it requires that the electric vehicles be assembled by union workers. And we know some of that Canadian delegation, for it, it, when you speak about southern states, has been meeting with officials from Tennessee that have the, the, a state that has that right to work kind of legislation. Um, you know, one one option for the Canadians, if it goes all the way through and they aren't able to stop and aren't able to get some sort of exemption when it gets to regulation, is to then go to Kuzma, to the, the new NAFTA, and uh, make an appeal. Um, that, you know, that is certainly... A, a possibility under the dispute resolution process, but can you take us through the timeline of something like that? Well, that would take forever. Uh, and I, I haven't reviewed the applicable provisions in, in the Canada US free trade agreement or Canada. <laughs> I know we all the call it name. something different. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but I'm not sure that this tax credit would violate the trade provisions. So the, the, I don't think that's the hope for Canada. I, I would say that an important thing developed this week, and that is the new United States ambassador to Canada arrived in Ottawa. I would strongly suggest that, that the folks that are in Washington right now, when they get back to Ottawa, they go see our new ambassador because he can make a big difference in this conversation in, in a very unified way. He is the one person that speaks about the Canada-U.S. relationship in Washington and to the White House. So you don't have to go see 50 people. Mm -hmm. Just go see the ambassador. 
EVs, electric vehicles, uh, are a big ticket item, but there's uh, there are other items, and uh, potatoes, one of them, and that is a big ticket item for uh, the province of Prince Edward Island that produces a lot of potatoes, and unfortunately where potato wart has been discovered, which is a, a fungus that causes disfiguration of a potato, doesn't impact uh, in the human health, but because of the implications of it, our agricultural authorities, the CFIA, halted exports as a as a sort of prevention technique before the Americans did the same thing, um, halting imports. That has now happened, but if that goes on for a very long time, is there a risk that the U.S. market then just moves away from PEI potatoes and finds other suppliers? Yeah, I don't think it can move that quickly. And this exact thing occurred while I was ambassador. And it, and it turned out that it was just a corner of one potato field in Prince Edward Island. And again, our embassy was able to intervene. I talked to the department, uh, to the Secretary of Agriculture directly about it. And, and we isolated that one potato field, if you will, not the whole industry, not, not everybody in TEI who produces potatoes. And, and resolved it that way. So thoughtful people can, can get through this. And I'm absolutely confident that your uh, agricultural officials are talking to our agricultural officials, but it doesn't have to be a total shutdown of PEI potatoes. Let me ask you finally, and uh, you know, I've only got a minute left here, uh, which seems foolish to talk to you about softwood lumber, which seems to have been an issue between our two countries since trees started growing. Um, is there any prospect of ever coming to some kind of permanent resolution? Yes, uh, and, and again, I think reasonable heads can get there. We almost came to a permanent longstanding deal, again, when I was um, in Ottawa. So I, I hate to keep putting this on our new ambassador, but I think once he's in place, I think this is something that he can take on and help resolve. It's not black and white. It always seems to be white in Canada and black in the United States. It, there are nuances around this issue. And, and uh, there, are, there are ways that have to be implemented to get it resolved, but on a long-term basis. And you're right. We've been disputing as between the two countries, softwood lumber, since 1900. Yeah, that says something. More than a century. Uh, Ambassador Giffen, it is always a privilege for us to um, be able to rely on your experience. Thank you so much. Good to speak with you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.